Welcome. Welcome to my session at Dreamforce 23. Today we have Consume Sales Cloud Data from Marketing Cloud with GraphQL. I'm Luciano Estrega. I'm a Salesforce Certified Professional from Argentina, working as the Salesforce Technical Architect at Team International. For kicking today's session, we have an agenda and we'll be performing an essay, a practical essay, uh, that will be reflected as a business request. So we have a business request, we have a challenge to solve, we have a problem that we need to tackle somehow. Essentially, we'll have to segment our audience within Salesforce. And once that audience is targeted and it's identified, then we'll be connecting Sales Cloud with Marketing Cloud. We'll review our solution that will be composed by GraphQL and server-side JavaScript within Automation Studio. We'll see how all of that is connected. Finally, we'll conclude our session with a live demo that will show how all of this is orchestrated behind the scenes. Let's talk about our segmentation challenge. As I said, the business requests us to send a CSAT email. So we are going to send a customer satisfaction email to contacts. Those contacts are high profile. So there are C-level, there are VPs, there are directors, there are CEOs, CFOs, etc. Apart from being C-level, they belong to accounts with opportunities for more than 100K in revenue. And also, they created service cases in the past. So these are the key pillars for our today's segmentation. Let's see later how we'll be segmenting this audience. Apart from that, we have a technical challenge. So uh, for understanding how to segment this audience, we know that the data is on sales cloud. So it is distributed accounts. Uh, it is distributed between accounts, contacts, opportunities, and cases. And if we, th if we think initially how to identify this audience, uh, the first thing we notice is that we cannot use standard reporting since contacts, opportunities, and cases are the same level and there are very low accounts in terms of uh, object hierarchy within the Salesforce data model. So standard reporting is not an option. We may need to do something custom or some other uh, technique or procedure for obtaining this, this audience. We do also know that emails will be sent from Marketing Cloud every three months. So we need to schedule that somehow. And they requested us to validate that the sync is working from Sales Cloud uh, so as to put some flag on the contacts in order to know that those contacts were successfully synced uh, every those three months. Now thinking on how to connect Sales Cloud with Marketing Cloud, we have many options on the table. All of them are valid. And we will go from the left to the right in terms of uh, the approach, so Marketing Cloud Connect, then uh, Salesforce consuming Marketing Cloud's API, and finally, Marketing Cloud itself consuming the Salesforce API, so the opposite way. The first option, it is a point-and-click integration with the managed package that it's installed on Sales Cloud. The other two requires programming. We'll see which is more feasible for today's challenge. Connected to marketing through the Marketing Cloud Connect package. So it, it's an out-of-the-box package. It basically sends our pool Salesforce records into read-only tables called synchronized extensions. The user define which are those subjects and which fields need to be synchronized and some basic filtering criteria. And then the user is able to perform a deeper segmentation, probably with views with uh, or with Automation Studio SQL activities. So you can query those synchronous data extensions. In this case, since we have to evaluate all opportunities and cases, if we would use uh, Marketing Cloud Connect, then we should also synchronize cases and opportunities. And do we need or are we allowed to push 
financial data or savings data into marketing code just for making this segmentation in on, in in which we know in advance that it's uh, there would just be a few volume a few records definitely not and must not be compliant also so this is a logger and might not be an appropriate solution then thinking on the opposite way so self first consuming marketing cloud api then in that case we would be creating an outbound integration coming from Salesforce to Marketing Cloud, declaring a Marketing Cloud Connect app. So every time you connect a third party to Marketing Cloud, you generate a set of credentials by creating a connected app. So that could be done. Um, all of this would have to be created and built with Apex code, especially for hitting the Salesforce, the, the Marketing Cloud SOAP APIs that are needed, especially for writing in, in data extensions. So the segmentation will be done through a combination of SQL queries, perhaps, with scheduled jobs and batch jobs if the volume is, is uh, uh, high. So it is a big, big de development task. And the effort is noticeable big. So this might not be an easy and scalable solution. On the opposite hand, thinking on a different approach, marketing cloud hitting Salesforce APIs, we have a completely different solution. Then Marketing Cloud will be making in an inbound integration into Salesforce. Um, we will declare server-side JavaScript activities and automation studios that will be consuming Salesforce APIs. In this case, the REST API for getting authenticated and then the GraphQL API for querying the records. Uh, also the server-side JavaScript activity will be updating the data extensions right? Because it has native functionality for accessing marketing cloud uh, uh, data structures, in this case, data extensions. So since all of this is condensated on just only one script and relatively small, this is a really low effort and modern solution. So let's jump on the proposed solution itself. So server-side JavaScript on Automation Studio with the GraphQL API. Let's start defining each of these components. So Automation Studio is basically a framework for automating a task that could be scheduled on the, or on demand. These activities are typically SQL queries over data extensions or synchronous data extensions. It could be sending emails, uh, journeys, etc. Um, it could be a server-side JavaScript uh, task like we have on today's uh, demo and other data transformation tasks or ETL tasks. We have service at JavaScript, which is a platform for scripting that runs on JavaScript and it is runs like Node.js on the backend. So this is server side JavaScript. It runs on marketing cloud backend. So it is built in, uh, it's built in library, allows your script to have HTTP support. So you are allowed to make callouts. And more, most importantly, uh, we have access natively to marketing cloud data model, right? So you can access to data extensions that are methods, functions already defined for doing that. And it could be run on cloud pages so as to make your development there, test it, debug it, and before you put it on Automation Studio. The key player here, GraphQL API, this is new, was introduced, generally available this year. Um, it is mainly a communication pattern for sending and receiving data in which there are really uh, interesting features like there is a single endpoint for the whole interaction with the Salesforce platform. You can send multiple queries on perhaps multiple different objects. So, uh, and those queries could be aggregations, could be fields themselves. So all of them on one single endpoint and you can combine them, right? But there's no switch in terms of endpoints as you are using like the REST API, the real REST API. In terms of security, all of the uh, GraphQL queries are UI 
uh, API enforced. So this means that the results of your query will depend on your objects access and your records access. So your sharing model. We do also offer support for LWC. This is critical and this is a really, really important feature. We are supporting generally available GraphQL over the LWC adapter as a wired variable. So that's a, a, a really uh, important feature we have. And also we are introducing mutations on Winner24. So and that's the reason we are using a new pre-release org. How uh, a GraphQL query looks like. So we see here, we have up the left the query itself. So we choose a name, in this case accounts, and we declare we are using the UI API. So then we use the query verb and we pick which object we are uh, uh, retrieving. So we expect accounts. Then we declare the edges uh, parameter. Edges is basically the array of results that will be returned. Node is the object itself. So we are asking for ID and name. And then this is the response, the expected response that will be dep depend um, on basically the request you are sending. So the response will always be 100% what you're asking for. No more fields that will not be ne unnecessary. That makes this kind of API uh, much more efficient. We see that we requested an account, edges are the records, notes are the records themselves. So we have ID and we have a name. GraphQL API versus REST API and versus probably uh, the composite API, which is the more the, the, the closest one in terms of doing multiple data requests on one single request. So um, the big benefit of the GraphQL API is a part that the response is fully uh, uh, in JSON and, and matches what you're asking is that there's support for LWC. Um, there's a lot of tools. It's more efficient in terms of the payload. So you can retrieve data and metadata. It is really, really uh, useful and also it's an standard now on, on our industry. Before jumping into the demo, the architecture that we will follow is the following. We have Marketing Cloud at the left, Salesforce at the right. We have Automation Studio uh, that every three months it will run a server-side JavaScript activity that this activity is making a post request, so a GraphQL query to the GraphQL API. GraphQL API responds with a JSON. That JSON is parsed by the server-side JavaScript activity, and accordingly, it updates the data extensions with the records. While the data extensions are updated, the new records are created or updated, then uh, it sends uh, another post request, in this case, a mutation to the GraphQL API, so as to make a DML operation, so it will update the contacts with the um, flag that I mentioned, telling that those contacts were successfully sent into Marketing Cloud. This, the, it, the DML operation, of course, is a Salesforce object, in this case, the contact object. So, which are the elements that we need for orchestrating this integration? On the Salesforce side, we will need a connected application, so a connected app following, and this is important, the client credential authentication flow that was introduced early this year. So uh, especially for these server to server integrations. We will create a new daytime field on contact for syncing, for time stamping the, the sync time. So when this was synced into Marketing Cloud, the GraphQL query itself and the GraphQL mutation, again, on winter 24. On the other side of Marketing Cloud, just two things, a custom data extension and a server-side JavaScript automation activity. So it is time to demo. Um, what I will do first is to review each of the elements that we have here. So 
on jumping first on Salesforce, we said we need a connected app. So I'll show you how that connected app looks like. So for seeing the connected app and its apps, App Manager, then Marketing Cloud Integration app. That's the one and with the name I chose. It follows the typical configuration of a connected app, so with the scope. However, there's something checked here, which is important, which is enable client credentials flow. Mainly this uh, means that this connected app will be consumed by um, an application, will be consumed by another third party, by just only using client ID and client secret. So no parameters, no uh, user context. So we'll not be using username, password, and token. Just only two parameters, client ID and client secret. And since this is a client credentials flows uh, connected app, if we click on manage, at the bottom, we said client credential flow run as the, tar the uh, designated user, in this case, myself. Right, so how to consume a connected app like this? Really, really easy. If we go to, po to Postman, we are um, hitting the typical endpoint for getting authenticated with O2. Just only grant type, client credentials, client ID, and client secret, nothing else. So no username, no password, no token. Yep, we just send in and we obtain our access token. This is our access token. Then what else we needed? We needed a flag on the contacts and we have a contact here. Since we said that we are going to target C level high profile, so CFO, CEOs, CCOs, VPs, etc., we introduce this last marketing cloud sync data that will be updated by the server side JavaScript activity at the end, telling that the contact was correctly synchronized. We all, what we also needed was a GraphQL query itself, and I have it here. So the GraphQL query, it is uh, self-explanatory in terms of the configuration. So it has two parts, one, which is the word clause that tells which are the contacts in this case we need, and then which are the fields that we are asking. So let's see the where first. And the word works pretty much the same way than a uh, subtle query. At the top, we named this contacts query. We are using UI API for enforcing security. We uh, define this as query, but it could have a different name. And we are operating the contacts object. The contacts object needs to be the following. So all the contacts that the title starts with C, VP, or director, plus they have cases through the contact ID. So apart from have this title, they need to have cases on with the contact ID. So and the account ID, they, they, they need to belong to an account with amounts greater than 100,000. Then on the edges, but well, I said it's, there are the records that when we return the array of records return, we're asking for ID, first name, last name, account, uh, email, and title. So this is our GraphQL query. There are many ways to run GraphQL queries against the Salesforce API. You can do it on Workbench, you can do it on Postman. Postman has uh, collections for interacting with the GraphQL API. But I recommend the Alter GraphQL client. The main reason is that it allows you to auto-complete and this is really, really helpful on complex queries, right? So first thing I will do is I will copy the authentication token we just obtained and I'll copy it in there. 
I will set as a header. Remember that this request needs to be authenticated. So I save it and I will run it. See that it returned five records. So in theory, our target audience are five records. And you can play with a GraphQL API. Um, so you can, for instance, uh, complete and, and, and add more fields. You can add aliases. So it says query one, and I put an alias there. And you can define another query probably with the, uh, with the same uh, uh, data or different objects. So you can retrieve multiple objects and multiple queries and could be aggregation queries. So that's one of parts of the key benefits of using the GraphQL API. Let's now jump on, on Marketing Cloud. So let's open Marketing Cloud. We will get there soon. You're in. So the first thing we have is our pre-created data extension in which we'll be storing our target audience, right? So this is the data extension that contains ID, first name, last name, title, email, and company. This is exactly what we asked on our GraphQL query. And let's clear this data extension. So let's just start from scratch. Data extension is clear. Now, next step is to work on our server-side JavaScript activity. For doing that, I'll go to Cloud Pages within Web Studio. I'll pick one of my collections. Collections are like folders of content. So I'll create content within the Dreamforce 23 collection. And I will define a new resource that will be test demo. Pick a URL. Domain. And I will use a JavaScript code resource. And here we have. So what we have here is I will select today's script and I will explain line by line what this is doing. So this will be our code today. This will perform the GraphQL API and also will update those contacts. At the top, really, really important to call the platform load library. This allows us to interact with the marketing cloud data model. The first part, the first block of code, mainly is the, the authentication into sale for itself. So we are going to con con uh, obtain uh, an access token from Marketing Cloud. I have the auth URL, the payload, which is, since it's a client credentials flow, grant type equals client credentials, client ID, and client secret. So these will be posted, we will get a response, and we will grab the token, the access token. Then we will start building our GraphQL query. So we knew that our GraphQL query was this one. In order to send it to Salesforce, we will send it as a JSON. So how to turn our GraphQL query into a JSON? Really, really easy. So. We will copy our GraphQL query. And there are many clients on the internet for doing this. So GraphQL to JSON, for instance. Then mainly what it does is to encode on a JSON format your GraphQL query. 
and it ended up looking like this. So query and the parameter. This long string is exactly the same what we have on our query, but with the characters escape. So this is a request. Then we build the code authorization viewer with the access to me, which is obtained. The service URL, really, really important. As, as we said on GraphQL API, we just only have one endpoint for all of our calls. We make a post, we get a response. We initialize our data extension. So our data extensions has a key. All of the extensions when you create them has a key that you use that you cannot use for coding. So you need you initialize that data extension. And mainly here what we do is we iterate on the results. And we saw that there were five records with edges, right? Edges were the array of records, nodes are the records themselves. So essentially what we do is we iterate on all of them. And if it's an insert, we prepare it as an insert. If it's an update, we prepare it as an update. And we are using the functions that the library permits us to update or add the new ROS. Uh, before jumping on the mutation, which is the last part, I want to run this. So for running, I will have to save it. I will publish it. Then the cloud is, is published and I will open it. So we just saw that we printed the access token. So we knew at least it got authenticated successfully within Salesforce. So let's jump to our data extension and see what happened there. Then on the data extension, we will go again to our template extension. And we have five records, so it did work. And here are the records. And then if we go to contacts, let's see, let's pick one of the Jack Rogers, for instance. Let's see if we have Jack. Dr. Rogers, this is one of the target audience. And we see that the last thing did just happen. So the last portion, as I said, it was the mutation. The mutation basically made the update. So I'm getting the time now. So I call now when I get all the necessary format and I use a mutation. This is, a dy it is dy generated dynamically for all of the contacts that were returned as part of the query. And it looks like this. So a mutation looked like this. We use the verb mutation, an alias, UI API, and many requests that we want to perform. As you saw, We are building this dynamically, so there are many requests as part of the for loop. And it's basically using contact update operation, sending the custom field, the value, and the record ID. So this is how it works. Finally, since we know that our script works fine, let's put this waiting automation studio. I'll go to Journey Builder, Automation Studio. On Activities, I already created a script activity. Which is GraphQL server-side JavaScript script, which is the same script we saw on the cloud page. And simply, 
I will create a new automation. In this case, I have a demo automation already created that will be using the script activity I created. And within the schedule, of course, we can pick every three months, we can configure that accordingly on our needs. So this was today's demo. All of the resources are on GitHub on this URL. You can access to this QR code or directly to the URL. So you'll find there the GraphQL API, but most importantly, the script to connect to the Marketing Cloud API. That's all for today. Thanks a lot for supporting us. See you soon.